Hello, hello. So if you want to use YouTube's new end screen feature, you need to know a couple of things first. The video must be at least 25 seconds long. The end screen element can be anywhere between five and 20 seconds long. It must contain at least one video element. And if you're doing it on an old video, you'll need to unpublish all of your old traditional annotations in order to add the new end screen. So we're gonna add an end screen to this video, which I've just uploaded. And to do that, we click on the end screen and annotations button and then it's gonna instantly take you to the last 20 seconds of your video. The end screen doesn't have to be a full 20 seconds and you can adjust the length of the end screen and when the elements kick in by dragging this here, but you can also change the start and end points of other elements manually and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So we're gonna add our first element and as I said earlier, at least one element must be a video or playlist. So I'm going to choose my most recent upload. You can also have YouTube select a video that is best for viewer based on the viewer's previous viewing habits, which of your videos they've already watched. But just to be clear, this will be the best for the viewer selected from your channel. And what I would recommend on the whole is to choose one specifically from your back catalog that is closely related to the video that's just been watched because that's gonna get a much better click through rate. I'm choosing the most recent upload because this isn't a real video. And of course, there's nothing to relate to that. So I click on create element and this is the only element that can be resized. So this is the smallest it can be currently. This is the largest it can be currently, and it can be any size in between those two sizes. It can also be moved and placed anywhere, but it must stay in this blue safe zone, which is the same for any other elements too. If you're gonna have any graphics burned in to point to these elements, you must make sure they fall within this safe zone too. So I'm gonna put that there for now. The next element I'm gonna add is a subscribe button. This is just a circular version of your channel icon. And when it's hovered over, it becomes clear that it's a subscribe button. I'll show you that now by clicking here to preview whatever you've done so far. And there when hovered, it pops out to show you exactly what it does. If I turn that preview off, this element can be moved, but it can't be resized. And you'll see that if you go to put one element over the other, you won't be able to save it because YouTube doesn't allow any elements to overlap. So I'm gonna stick that there. You'll also notice that it's got these really handy snap grids to help you line elements up. The next element I'm gonna add is a channel. That is exactly the same size and shape as your channel avatar, but this is when you wanna promote another channel. So for here, I'm gonna do an example and you'll see there that this element has just been created and that will have the same hover over aspect as your own subscribe button. The final element you can add is a link. So that can be a link to your own website. I have my website associated here. If you wanna find out how to associate yours, click on the card now. You can link to one of YouTube's approved retailers. So that includes things like iTunes, Google Play and Shopify. Or you can link to a crowdfunding site that includes charity money raising sites and sites such as Patreon. I'm gonna add in a link to my own website and that is going to provide you with all of the images that the web page holds. But I would actually suggest changing that image, just make sure it's square in format to make sure that it's perfectly optimized for this size because it could potentially crop any featured images you have on that site. You can also change the title of the link and the text of the call to action. So if I create that element, we'll have a quick look what that looks like. So when we preview that, the call to action is to learn more. So that is the four elements covered and how you can use those. There are other quicker ways that you can populate this. So if I delete these elements, you can use a template. So for example, a two video and a subscribe template. I'm not quite sure why you would use these when they're so easy to just add in yourself. And then my favorite shortcut is that if you have a consistent end card or end screen across all of your videos, you can easily pull in an end screen from a previous video. So I started using a new graphical end screen template on my last video. So I'm gonna pull that into this video and you can see that it will start from the same point from the end as your last video. So what you can see here is actually part of my video. It's a template I've created that leaves space for me to add in these elements and it looks really professional. 
If you want to see how I created it and even get a free Photoshop template so that you can make your own, click this card. Now I'm going to show you what it looks like once the elements are pulled in from the last video. So we've got a playlist, we've got my website link and we've got my subscribe button. I like to have this click to subscribe call to action because it's not clear for a new user that this is actually a button and not just a picture of me. As I said earlier, if you want to, you can change the start and end points of elements to bring them in at different times. So they don't all have to be on screen at the same time. So here's my end card in all its glory. Click here at the top for a playlist of more YouTube quick tips. And before you go, make sure you're subscribed and that you hit that bell to receive notifications for all of my future videos. Speak to you soon.